Quick backstory, that Hangman program from my first program I ever coded video, that was done in my CS333 course, which was problem solving and programming one and two smashed into a single course. And alongside that course, I had to take CS252, which was intro to Unix for programmers. Today, we're gonna to take a look, not as deep as we actually went in that class, but we're gonna take a look at the list of commands, some of the basic ones that we went over in that class. And I kinda of wanna see what I actually took over into my actual career and which ones I haven't even seen since that class. So there are a few levels to this. There are some commands that I use just about every single day. There are other commands that I'll use on occasion, maybe when I'm looking something up or when I just really need to just like figure out a particular problem and you know use a terminal to fix that problem. And then there's the really bottom of the bucket commands that I've personally never used since that. We're gonna go through that and kind of categorize some of these commands based on what was taught in that class and what I do as a software engineer. So let's get started. Uh, CS252, I haven't seen this page in like, well, besides yesterday when I was thinking about making this video, three years, four years, give or take, somewhere around there. Sure, this curriculum is from you know 2018, but pretty sure all the content of this is the same as when I took it three or four years ago, because. Not much changes with the Unix. I did take a look at a few of these, try to find like a command list, and I did inside some basic Unix commands and at all the way at the bottom of this. What's funny about this is that you can take a look at this URL and you can take a look at all of this curriculum. All you can't do is go into like the assignments and some of those specific things, but you can take a look at all of this curriculum for free. A lot of the online courses from ODU, the curriculum is online for free. Just the assignments and you know the teacher and all that stuff isn't available to you. So fun little tip, but basic Unix commands all the way down, commands glossary. Now this doesn't list all of the commands from what I remember, but it lists a lot of the basic ones and some of the difficult ones, but not any of the ones that really get into really deep detail because you know you can have some commands that are like three lines long. For the sake of this video and for the sake of my mind, we're not gonna look at any of those. So let's first look at file and directory manipulation. CD, that stands for change directory. I use that one the most out of anything because you kind of need to use that in order to change the directory. Ch mode, I use this when particular you know private keys come into the equation where I need well file protection as you can see right here but other than that very rarely do I use this it's generally kind of like a one and done type of deal for whatever site or credentials you're working with CP never do I use CP although I should use CP I just kind of normally do it the old-fashioned way I'll have two files open I'll copy and paste whatever I need but generally I don't need to copy an entire file in its entirety I just kind of need a little snippet from here or there what have you and that kind of lays out our three categories that I discussed earlier this is one I use all the time this is one I use on occasion and this is one that I never use find I never use in all honesty whenever I have Linux I just essentially open up the file Explorer I type in whatever I need to find and then that's kind of how I find it. I make sure I'm in the proper directory so it could search down in its branches, but I never use find in the actual terminal window. Maybe I will from now on. I kind of forgot it existed. LS, that's one that you're gonna use all the time. That is one, well, that lists the files in the directory. So if you change to a particular directory, you need to figure out what's inside that directory. LS, it'll show all the directories, all the files, what have you. Make dir stands for make a directory. It'll create a new directory in your current directory. I do use that one all the time, especially if I'm trying to work on something. I just make dir and then type in the directory name and I'm good to go. And a fun little fact right here is that this little squiggly line, doesn't matter what directory you're in, this squiggly line means home. So as you can see right here, if you do make dir tilde slash the name of your directory, then that'll create a new directory inside your home directory. The more you know. Move or renames files. Uh, I never use, I can't say never, I will use this when I am SSH'd into a remote desktop because a lot of the times when I don't have access to a particular remote desktop, I will use MV to move particular files and a lot of times I'll, I'll use a make dir and stuff like that for, but I haven't used that since school. In my actual job as software engineer, I haven't used it. But in school, I would need to SSH into my re remote desktop that is owned by ODU, and that's where this would really come in handy. So I didn't actually have to load up the remote desktop. I could just kind of like SSH in and just kind of, you know, navigate around in the terminal. PWD, nope, don't use that. RM for remove file, right? Deletes listed files, yeah. Never use that. 
Oh, so this is removing a list of files. This is removing a directory. I, I do use that sometimes when I mess up the name or don't feel like editing, whatever. Unmask sets default permissions for newly created files. Nope, don't use that. Oh, I haven't used this in so long. And in all honesty, I was actually looking for this. I forgot 100% what it was, but I wanted to compare two files and open up well, the contents of each file that I listed actually may not be this one. What I was trying to do was have a command, can't remember what the command was even till this day, and compare the text in two files. I remember doing that, but I couldn't find the, the proper command to do that. If you know that, can you please leave that in the comment below because I couldn't find it. Oh, and Emacs. If you use Emacs, you are my sworn enemy. <laughs> I am not an Emacs person. I have plenty of other text editors that I will happily use before Emacs. And you can open it the same exact way. It's not living in the terminal, but you can open it using the terminal. And it'll open up Sublime Text or Atom or whatever text editor you like. Heck, it can be Notepad++ if that's what you're into. Anything but Emacs, please. I know that one's going to get some dislikes on the video. I feel like Emacs and like Vim. I think Vim is somewhere down here. It has to, yeah, Vim. These two, I feel like people are just sworn by it, not because it's better, at least no one's been able to prove to me that it's better than, you know, existing text editors, but because it's like either they're old school and that's kind of what they've been using forever or they're hipsters and they're like, I want to be like the old schools and that's what they use. So let's make sure we like this video to counteract all the dislikes for me talking crap about Vim and Emacs. Grep, I will use this a lot. I use this a lot when I'm messing with my ports. In all honesty, not even 100% how I use it. All I know is that when I'm messing with my ports, I use grep. What do I do? I, do, I use, do I use that along netstat as well? Whenever I mess with the, I hate messing with the ports because a lot of the times it just really screws with me when I think something should work a particular way, it doesn't. So I have to work with netstat command and, and grep and I just don't want to deal with it. But moving on, more. Don't use that one. Nano, edit a text file, create an empty one. Yep, don't use that one. Said, looks familiar, but don't use that one from what I remember. And of course, them. No. Exit, 100%. Of course I use exit. I, just in case I'm ever logged into anything, SSH or whatever, exit will exit the terminal plus log out of whatever you're logged into within the terminal. So it, it's just helpful. You use exit a lot easier to just type exit than you know take your mouse and hit the exit button up here i don't know just found it to be uh what i like to do it also makes me feel special because you know typing something into the keyboard and hitting enter and then like something happens satisfying our login don't use that logs you into another machine on the network that's actually pretty interesting i wonder if i could log into like my coworkers. who nope haven't used that WC files, list the number of characters, words, and lines in a text file. Oh, that's convenient. WC. Don't use it, but maybe I will. Wget. I actually just used this recently because there's this website that I really liked and I kind of want to see how it was put together. I used Wget and I forget what I typed after that. I found it somewhere online and it pulled down all of the files for this particular website. That's what in, the, in this industry, software development industry, we call leveraging a website. It's just a fancy way in this industry of saying stealing. SCP and SSH, haven't used these actually, not since this class, but since I graduated from college. Because in college, like I mentioned before, I would remote into that remote desktop. And this is essentially what I would use to log in and then to do whatever I need to do here. And, and that was like all throughout school. Date, eh, don't use that. Echo, I'll sometimes use that. Man, don't use that. Zargs, is that how you pronounce that, Zargs? Don't use that either. So how was that outcome? I didn't actually count. I think most of those commands laid somewhere in like I use these sometimes because most of them you don't really you need to use. I don't really need to use them on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't want to speak for you because I don't know what you do. I don't need to use them on a day-to-day -day basis, but of course I, you know, change directory ls and I use a lot of commands that actually aren't even in this list. I just wanted to see kind of the comparison between college, what they teach you, Unix for programmers, to an actual programming job. And essentially what I do. So that was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, I know there's going to be some haters that, you know, the Emacs and Vim stuff. So if you didn't already, be sure to like this video. If you did like the video, be sure to subscribe because I make a lot of videos similar to this. Until next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace.